Hey, this is Dean. Had a chance to do a little uh, fishing on the local rivers lately, uh, going after blue wing olives. As you can see, it's a nasty day out. It's raining right now. That's why I'm sitting under a, a cover of a, in a park, uh, under the cover of a canopy here. Uh, it's raining out. Uh, it's been gray and drizzly. Not so good for me, but awfully good for the blue wing hatches. They love this kind of weather. Fish like it too. Doesn't slow them down a bit. Gives them a Gives them a great time to feast on those blue wings as they emerge from little nymphs on the bottom and come up and uh, work their way through the water column, come up and uh, emerge, get their wings and uh, turn into duns. And then they'll, they'll fly up and mate, uh, come down, lay their eggs, die, and then the uh, spinners will be there and the fish will feast on those also. So there's all sorts of great opportunities for dry fly fishing, especially this time of year. I've got some info first from uh, Rich Lake over at Fish West Fly Shop in Sandy. Going to talk a little bit about blue wing olive patterns and mergers and some different strategies. And then I'll, uh, I'll come back and wrap it up. Here with uh, Rich Lake over at Fish West uh, Fly Shop in Sandy, talking a little bit about blue wing olives. Uh, Rich, why don't you uh, give us a little info here that we can use to help in our fishing. Cool, yeah. Uh, hey guys, this is Rich from Fish West. Uh, the blue wings have just started to hatch about a week, week and a half ago. So we're going to cover some different stages of the bug's life. Um, starting with some dry flies, going down to the nymphs. Um, and so I'll discuss what, how to fish them, um, or how I like to fish them, other ways you can fish them as well, um, to get the best results when you, when you get out there. All right, guys. So first up, um, the, the first pattern I'm going to show you is going to be the parachute. Um, here's some uh, fairly medium-sized parachute uh, BWOs. Um, they are about a size 20. Um, go much smaller than that, and a little bit larger. Um, I like to stay uh, this time of year in the 20 to about 16 range, um, unless I absolutely have to go smaller. Um, 20 is typically the smallest. I like to to throw as far as dry flies. It's easier on my eyes. Um, so with these with these patterns, I typically use a 5x tippet. Um, if you come across some very uh, wary fish, very selective fish, going down to a 6x X tippet will. Uh, definitely increase the, the takes you get on that. Next up is going to be the, uh, the Awani Dunn Thorax. So this is a little extended body parachute pattern that I really like to, to uh, fish here in Utah. Um, I really like to use this for very selective fish. Um, I feel like the extended body portion of the fly um, kind of convinces the fish to eat a little bit more readily than your standard parachute patterns. Um, as well as the, the body lifts up off the shank of the hook a little bit higher than some other patterns, which gives you a larger bite um, as far as the gape and everything like that on the hook. Um, again, I like to fish this mainly by itself. Um, can't support too much weight, but, um, but if I do add a dropper, it's going to be a lightweight dropper, something that I fish right below the surface of the film or even on top behind it. All right. Next up is the uh, last chance cripple. Um, so I do like fishing cripple patterns, uh, sometimes by themselves, most of the time trailing a larger, a larger dry fly. Um, this pattern represents a, uh, a nymph transforming into an adult. It kind of got stuck in its shock and struggling to fully, uh, fully, I guess, mutate into the adult uh, or hatch into the adult. Um, <clears throat> they're fairly easy to see. Um, got a little CDC on here with a little bit of hackle around the thorax to prop it up. Um, it's just an easy meal for, for trout um, and, and something that even some of the more selective trout will take. Um, next one down, we got the last chance cripple, which is a little bit lighter body cripple. Um, fish it the same way as the film critic. Um, <clears throat> Again, just like to, to fish that behind a larger dry or, you know, sometimes by itself. Um, next one up, we got the sparkle done. Uh, this one I definitely like to fish by itself. Um, you know, it doesn't hold much weight. <clears throat> it's a very small and pro thin profiled fly. 
Um, but it works great for when, you know, the duns are landing on the water, uh, laying their eggs and stuff like that. Next up, we got the captive dun. Um, this is a little CDC bubble back uh, fly. You can uh, fish this both as a, a dry or a wet. Um, typically, I like to put a little bit of floating on it and just fish it right, you know, right in the, the bubble line, the film. Um, but you can also add some weight to that and swing them. Uh, have them drop down close to the riverbed and allow them to swing up in the water column. And I've gotten quite a few fish uh, swinging those as well. Um, next pattern you can do the same thing with, the RS2. Um, that's a well-known blue wing pattern that, that we like to use here in Utah and really across the West. Um, some, <clears throat> some of my best fish have been caught on the RS2 this time of year. Again, fishing it within the bubble line in the film, but also putting some split shot on it, getting it down and swinging it up and through the water columns. Um, both of these patterns are great dropper options uh, for a larger dry fly in front of them. Um, and that's usually how I like to fish these, just right below the surface film, uh, trailing some sort of dry fly pattern. <clears throat> and lastly, we've got um, two nymph patterns to go over. Uh, first is the WD-50, which is also a, a great little mayfly pattern. Uh, you know, you can tie them up in, in different colors, buy them in different colors to represent different mayflies. But this color here is our, our blue wing color. Um, and it has a little bit, little tungsten bead on it to get a little bit deeper in the, in the water column, especially if you're doing a dry dropper. Um, but again, you can also throw some weight in front of it and sink it down really low and swing it up um, in the water column and, and catch some fish on the swing. Um, and finally, what we have is the Juju Betis. Um, this is a great pattern for, for, for both mayflies and betis. Um, and here we have the purple option, which is, is a favorite of mine. Um, but the Juju Betis, I, I really like to fish that uh, sunken. Uh, so I will throw, add some weight to that guy, um, dead drift it through the hole, and then also for every once in a while, let it swing up. Um, all these patterns, though, um, have been very successful here for the guys at the shop, um, as well as some of our customers, too. Well guys, that kind of covers the uh, blue wing patterns that we like here at Fish West, some of our favorites. Um, feel free to swing on by to pick some of these up. We've got dozens and dozens of them in the boxes. Um, and if there's ever any questions or anything about how to fish these or hatches going off on our local rivers, feel free to give us a call at 801-617-1225. Have a good one guys. Go get them. Right. Thanks Rich. Picked up a nice brown here on the nymph. He doesn't want to come in. So I picked about up on a zebra midge today. So I've been picking a few up on zebra midges and sow bugs and little betas patterns. Anyway, uh, I'm going to net this guy, put him back in the river. This guy's flipping all around. This this brown is a tangled up mess, but he took a dry fly. He had a sparkle done, uh, so I'm going to let him go. See if I can get some more on dries. They're just starting to come up. It's about 12.30. You can see that guy right there. My uh, little green sparkle done. Seems to be doing a good job. So I'm going to uh, keep fishing it. The hatch just kind of started. So I will show that sparkle done to you. This is the uh, sparkle done that seemed to work so well on the uh, Provo for the blue wing hatch the other day. It just has a little root beer or ginger uh, antron or zelon tail or shuck, depending on what you want to look at it as. Uh, the abdomen is just a little uh, olive thread. UT70 in this case. Uh, it has a little bit of uh, dubbing uh, just behind the wing and, and in front of the wing a little bit of uh, real fine dry fly olive dubbing and then the, the wing uh, it's the Compar Comparadon style fly so it's just a, a deer hair, coastal deer hair wing on it. It floats really good. 
uh, it sits low in the water so it can be used as an emerger or as a dun. Uh, but the fish seem to like it. This, uh, as I said, size 16 and seem to be very effective. Caught quite a few fish on this, so give it a try. Good luck. Picked up a nice brown here. This one was on the dropper. Uh, he, I've been uh, Up a, up a really nice one here. I switched up off the atoms. <laughs> I put a trailer fly on it. It's a merger pattern called a film critic. If I can get a close up on him, but uh, first cast, this guy he might be my nicest fish of the day. Came up and uh, he just pounded it. So I'll, uh, I'll mention that fly too. It, uh, one, uh, one cast, one nice fish. All the nice crowd on the film critic. Another nice crowd on the film critic. I uh, don't know what to say except that he's been pretty epic. Uh, really been pounding him. It's been. One of those days that uh, doesn't come along very often, but they're taking the blue wings and it's been an awesome day. Lots of fish, lots of nice browns. Well, I had a great day fishing blue wings. Uh, when I was out there, they were certainly hatching. Uh, the fish were keying in on them. I was fishing size 16s, which is nice, a little bigger fly. Uh, let me just talk a little bit about leader, uh, leader construction and the way I, the way I, uh, put it together to fish for blue wings. And I'll adjust this a little bit depending on the, the kind of water. If, if it's really uh, kind of a placid, calm place where I'm fishing, uh, slow water, I, I might extend my leader a little bit. Uh, if it's faster water, like a little tongue coming off a riffle, a little seam, I, I might uh, shorten up the leader a little bit. But generally I'll have a, I'll tie in a nine foot leader, tapered leader, four X, five X. And then off of that, I'll add another three feet, three and a half feet or so of tippet, 5X or 6X. And then from there, I'll, uh, if I'm fishing uh, the way I was, uh, I'll put on a, a done pattern and uh, I'll run oh, maybe two and a half feet of tippet, a 6X, whoops, down to an emerger pattern and uh, Make sure you put a little fly floating, especially on that done, uh, on the emerger pattern. I usually put a little floating on that too. Uh, it depends if it's a CDC fly, uh, which is a, a kind of a, it's a, a special kind of feather that floats uh, on your emerger. You, you won't want to put any floating on that. That, uh, that doesn't help it out. But on a, on a regular emerger, I'll put a little bit of fly floating on it just to keep it on the surface. Um, but sometimes if it sinks a little bit, that's even better, so you have to experiment. Anyway, uh, get out, have a chance to uh, fish the blue wing hatches right now. Nasty days like today work out awesome, but they will hatch uh, when the sun is out also, so don't let that keep you off the water. Usually the hatches come off, when I was fishing, it started to come off about 12.30, and uh, they came off pretty good until about 2.30 and then it gets to be awful sporadic after that. So if you can catch it at the right time, timing is everything, and if you can catch it at the right time, you can get in some great dry fly fishing. So go out with a line, uh, hook a bunch up, have some fun.